ExpressLRS might be the most exciting thing to happen to RC control links in a long time. In case you're like, haven't heard, ExpressLRS uses the same technology as TBS Crossfire, Immersion RC Ghost, and TBS Tracer to get incredible range. But ExpressLRS is based on open source firmware, so you can follow along with the development or even contribute to it if that's the kind of thing you're into. But more fundamentally, ExpressLRS is much less expensive while delivering equal or better performance to those protocols. But there's a catch. Until recently, there wasn't an easy way to just go out and buy an Express LRS module and Express LRS receiver, slap them into your quadcopter and go fly. But all that is changing. Today, we're gonna do a roundup of the available Express LRS hardware that's out there. And if you are thinking of switching, you're gonna see just how much you can get for just how little money. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Before we dive into the video, if you are looking for a comparison of all of these control links, Immersion RC Ghost, Tracer, Crossfire, FreeSky, Express LRS, I've got a video where I ran down all the pros and cons of each of them. It's not actually a given that Express LRS is going to be the best for everybody, although it certainly does have its fans. Link to that down in the video description if you want to check that out after you get done here. Uh, the other thing, if you are getting into Express LRS and you want a walkthrough of how like to flash it, how to get it going, how to set it up. I've also made that video and again the link is down in the video description. But don't go because it'll be terrible for my analytics if you click away right now. Let's talk about Express LRS hardware. And the first one we're going to look at is from Happy Model. Yes, the same Happy Model that makes the Mobulus 6. So as you think about which one of these you're going to get, one of the things you're going to want to think about is how the build quality of this hardware and this vendor makes you feel about trusting your aircraft to it. The Happy Model uh, module, uh, here we're looking at the 2.4 gigahertz module, and by the way, Express LRS can operate in both 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz. Uh, we're gonna be focusing on 2.4 gigahertz, and the reason is that the, the general thought of the Express LRS devs is that 2.4 gigahertz is where most people are gonna wanna be. You get higher refresh rates, you get more pilots in the air at the same time without interference, you get uh, 2.4 gigahertz is a global band, so if you live in Europe where the 868 megahertz band is very, very narrow, 2.4 gigahertz is very wide, and yes, you get slightly less range with 2.4 gigahertz, but you still get so much range. You get 30, 40, 50 kilometers of range. It's so much freaking range that it's more than most people are going to need. So unless you're like trying to fly like 80, 90 kilometers really far, 2.4 gigahertz is going to be fine, and that's where we're going to focus. So here is the Happy Model 2.4 gigahertz module. Uh, and the main thing to point out about this is that its maximum output power is 24 dBm. And we can see that that works out to 250 milliwatts. Now, again, that is plenty. That is more range than most people are going to need. But the other modules that we're going to look at, some of them will have a higher output power. And obviously, if you can get a higher output power, you'd probably want that. Now, if we look at the case for the Happy Model 2.4 gigahertz module, you'll see that there is a spot here for a fan. And in fact, the main reason it only goes up to 250 milliwatts is cooling. You can actually flash firmware to it to allow it to go to higher output power, but you have to install a fan and there's some risk of overheating. Most of the devs say it's it's not even worth the trouble for the typical user. The other thing I'll say, and I do, I do have this one, is that the... There's a lot of complaints about the quality of the injection molded case. Uh, some people say that the screws don't really, they strip out or they don't hold very well. And other people have pointed out that the board itself will get pushed around if you plug and unplug it and it will actually move around inside. So there are some build quality issues with this one, although overall the performance, at least of the first batches, has been fine. Now the Happy Model module comes in at $45. Next, we're going to take a look at this one from a vendor called Namimno, and I have no freaking idea who this is. Like a lot of times a Chinese company will be another company just operating under a different name, but I really, I haven't been able to pin down who this is. Probably it's not someone who just came out of the blue and decided that a new Express LRS module would be their first product. 
but there's really no way for me to judge the quality, like with Happy Model, where you could say, well, how, how good a quality has the Mobulus 6 been or some other Happy Model quad? There's really no way to judge this uh, brand based on any kind of past reputation. Now, I haven't personally received this module yet, but from people who have gotten it, they have said that the quality of the injection molded case is better. It's a better fit. It's more secure and it's generally higher quality than the Happy Model case. In addition, you can see that we've got a fan and there is a fan in here and we've got an XT30 plug. And the reason for the fan and the XT30 plug is that this module can go up to 20 7 dBm. And actually, 27 dBm is 500 milliwatts. Uh, I think I've heard people who got this module and tested it say it goes up to one watt, which is, that's a lot more than 500 milliwatts. Even if it only goes up to 500 milliwatts, that's still twice as much as the Happy Model. The Namimno is $50, so it's $5 more than the Happy Model. But overall, I feel like the increased build quality is pretty worth it if you can find it in stock. The next one we're going to look at is this ExpressLRS Nano module from Beta FPV. And this one stands out because all the ones we've seen so far have been micro-sized for a JR module bay. But what if you've got a radio like a FreeSky x Lite and you want to use a Nano module or a TBS uh, Tango 2 with a module bay on Ooh putting an Express LRS module on a TBS Tango 2. I'm not sure if that would like open a portal to the nether realms, but uh, yeah, you could do it. As far as capabilities go, it does go up to 500 milliwatts, which is pretty impressive given its small size and it doesn't have a fan, although it does have a big metal heat sink on the back. Real quick, uh, in the time since I recorded this video, Wesley Vardy released a video about his beta FPV module not being able to flash and i'll put a link to this video down in the video description but the short version is that there is a problem with the design of the first set batch of beta fpv modules that means that on some of them it's unknown how many uh, not a hundred percent but some you have to actually open the module up and push a button on the board or you have to solder a capacitor onto the board to fix to make it possible to flash um the subsequent beta FPV is aware of this and will fix it in subsequent batches. But for the time being, if you buy a beta FPV module and it won't flash, go check out this video from Wesley Vardy to find out why. And maybe don't buy a beta FPV module today until the first batch sells through. And the price for the beta FPV nano module is $40. The last module that I want to show you is this one. Uh, and a lot of people have confused this for a light module. Uh, it is not. This is similar in size to a light module, but it's designed specifically to run with the Jumper T Lite. In other words, it just sticks to the back of the radio. It doesn't like have a module bay plug and it wires directly into the Jumper T Lite through the uh, extension bay uh, that comes with it. You can watch my review of the Jumper T Lite if you want to see more about that, link down in the video description. So you're only going to be using this module if you own the Jumper T Lite, but the Jumper T Lite is a pretty good radio for the price, and a lot of people, especially people just getting into the hobby, are getting it. In fact, even some pro pilots, like I think Nick Burns, like loves this freaking radio and has switched to it as his primary radio, even though he could be flying just about anything that he wants. Well, folks, it turns out I might be wrong about... Ooh, Wrong? Ouch, that hurts. I might be wrong about this only working with the Jumper T light. Um, so what you see pictured here basically just has a, a straight metal backing plate that sticks to the back of the T light and has a plug that plugs into the wires that come out the back of the T light. I ordered this. Um, I didn't order it from Pyrodrone. I ordered it from eBay because it was out of stock at the time. And mine came with an alternate backing plate that has a light module plug. So the one, I, I can't 100, I don't see that pictured on any product listing that I can find, but it might be worth asking your vendor because uh, the Happy Model module, if it did come in a light form factor, it seems like it's better at least today than the Beta FPV one because it doesn't have this manufacturing defect that I mentioned. This module is gonna cost you $33, $34. And uh, as far as capabilities go, it goes up to 24 dBm or 250 milliwatts. You'll notice when I talk about capabilities of these, I'm basically talking about the output power and the price and nothing else. 
And the reason for that is that all of these modules are based on the same ExpressLRS reference designs. ExpressLRS project has published their reference designs and explicitly said that they want manufacturers to build hardware based on these designs. And that's one reason that these modules are so inexpensive compared to something like a TBS Crossfire, Immersion RC Ghost, or a TBS Tracer. Because the OpenTX devs are basically doing all the R&D for this stuff for free. And so that gives, I don't know, that's just what they want to do with their life, more power to them. Um, so these modules are coming in way less expensive, but more, more to the point, since they're all built on the same reference design, they all have exactly the same capabilities. And yes, as some people have asked this, they're all compatible with each other. All ExpressLRS modules, all ExpressLRS receivers, whether you build it yourself, whether you buy it from Happy Model, Naminmo, Beta FPV, doesn't matter, they're all compatible. Now these modules aren't gonna do you any good without receivers, so let's take a quick run through that. And the first one I wanna show you is this one. This is the Happy Model EP2 receiver. This is a pretty cool one because uh, this one comes with a ceramic antenna. It's also available in a version with a UFL connector if you prefer to have a full-size external antenna. Uh, and this is, it is so, so small. It's so small. It's preposterously small. <laughs> if it's about half the size of a Crossfire receiver, if that means anything to you. Um, this one is the Beta FPV receiver, and this one is closer in size to uh, basically a Crossfire receiver. It does have a UFL connector for a standard antenna, and it also costs $20. This is the 915 version. There's also a 2.4 gigahertz version. And finally, we've got the Naminmo receiver, uh, and it is also about $20, about the same size, and has a UFL connector on it. Um, so there's not much differentiation here. So as far as receivers go, they're all the same price, and you basically are just going to take your pick on whether you want the Happy Model receiver, which is the absolute smallest and the only one that's available with a ceramic antenna, or one of the others, which is going to be a little bit bigger, uh, maybe a little easier to solder to, and has a UFL connector on it. But the other differentiator that you've got to take into account, and I can't really give you an answer here, is the sort of trustworthiness and reliability of these vendors. Happy Model, Beta FPV, and Naminmo. And I got to tell you, one of those is a total unknown, and the other two don't have the most stellar reputation for quality. And I always feel bad about saying that because like, I'm so thrilled that Happy Model and Beta FPV have stepped up and are making this hardware. This is awesome and this is good for FPV and RC as a hobby and I want them to succeed. But remember the Beta FPV light radio and the problems people had with the gimbals? I'm not gonna name names, but one vendor who sold the Beta FPV light radio said every single one they sold ended up coming back with bad gimbals eventually. That might be a slight exaggeration, but it's not that much of an exaggeration. So we know that Beta FPV can be, let's just, let's be charitable and say that they're hit or miss. Sometimes they do great, sometimes they do terrible. And which one is this going to be? Happy model? 50-50. They tend to do. They tend to be a little better, I think. But uh, every, some people out there have had bad experiences with them. So, unfortunately, that's not one I can solve for you. But the good news is, the good news is that this stuff is cheap as beans. So if it does break, well, if it does break, you're going to crash your quad or lose your quad, and that's not good. But that is how it is. If you really care, build your own and see if you can do it better. Nah, don't be silly. That's gonna do it for this video. Uh, I that that that's it. Pick one, buy it, check it out, watch the tutorials, see if this is for you. This is just the cheapest and in some ways the most fun if you like like being a nerd and geeking out on tech way to get into a really good quality control link. With this stuff out there, I mean, there's a compelling argument that even beginners can get a good good control link way better than 2.4 gigahertz Fly Sky Free Sky Spectrum with just a little bit of hurdles of, of having to actually do some like up firmware updating and stuff, but it's not that bad tutorial in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.
Happy flying. You guys, I don't know where I am, and I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel, or, or maybe join my Patreon, or, or click one of the... Click one of these videos I picked out for you. <laughs>